Move this over here. Okay. What is up, everyone? We are live. All right, today we're gonna exciting topic. It's about gear, gear to create, gear to create video, and. Um, yeah, it's almost February 2021, so I wanted to get this out there. And uh, you know what? If you like a PDF with a detailed list, I've got those PDF guides for you. And to be honest, my core gear for creating hasn't changed much. But for you, I think you have to look at what is your situation, what is you, your goal, and what are you creating? And so to give you some reference, um, it's 2021. I'm spending a lot more time indoors. It's difficult to travel right now. And um, yeah, I just have to adapt to the times. I think that is important. So my core activities are I'm creating video content for YouTube, for my online courses. And um, I'm still doing some footage for stock footage purposes. I'm also um, doing video editing for clients and myself. I'm doing graphics. I'm doing online marketing. And so a lot of people focus on what camera you need. So I think it's important to get that primary camera if that is going to be your goal. What I've seen is my video production uh, work has been impacted by COVID. But that same camera that I use for client videos, I also use for myself for doing online courses, for talking head videos. And uh, so I'm talking about my Panasonic GH5 camera. I got that in 2017 and that that's an example of a good investment. You have to understand that there's different product cycles and there's times where there's a piece of gear that really is going to give you, you know, it's really going to help you push the needle, give you a, a, uh, a boost in your ability to create. And I'd say in 2021, uh, this December, 2020, the, Mac released the Apple silicon chip in the form of the M1. So I'd have to say that is probably the most exciting hardware upgrade that I've gotten. It's allowed me to create videos with the Apple ecosystem. And yeah, I'm able to video edit super fast on Final Cut Pro. So I've actually made a shift focusing less on cameras and gear. Yes, I did make some purchases and I'll go over the, the purchases that I've made since um, coming back to Canada in June 2021 because I did buy a lot, but it hasn't been all hardware, it's been software. So let's go over some of those uh, items that I purchased as well as I will play the video that covered some of my core gear and software so let's go let's go okay so i did purchase a new lens sigma 1835 lens and that has allowed me to film at home it's got a wide angle lens and i got the adapter for the sigma 18 to 35 lens and that allows me to film in low light, get that cinematic look. It allows me to get a aperture of f1.2 on my Panasonic GH5. So you're going to get that nice blurry cinematic look. And um, 
yeah and and i've been filming a lot with it indoors my workspace where i'm actually working right now it's not the biggest space so by having that wide angle lens it's allowed me to film in here because when i'm in vancouver i've actually filmed in my condo lounge but because of covid they've disallowed that so um, the lens was a pretty big purchase i was looking at it for a long time but there was no doubt that this is the the must get item for my camera system and i believe every creator should have a wide angle lens that's going to allow you to film at home film youtube videos film travel videos and uh it's a canon lens actually so i can actually use this for canon slr bodies which i do have and I would say that your camera lens are a good investment. It's, it might just outlast your camera body. Okay, uh, other new purchases. I got this microphone right here. If you've been following my YouTube channel on Digital Nomads in Asia or on Chic Voyage or just the live streams I've done on Facebook, you would see I'm using this microphone a lot. I got it in Malaysia. And it's really stepped up my game in terms of the audio quality. And uh, it's an XLR mic. It allows me to basically broadcast with confidence, to do voiceovers, to do online courses, and um, live stream. And the quality is just amazing. Everyone is doing some form of Zoom call or video call. And by having this microphone, it's, you know, people that are on the other end, they can tell that I'm, I've got the proper gear and it all starts with the audio. So this microphone actually connects to my H5 Zoom recorder that I, I purchased that audio recorder back in 2016, I think. That was such a great purchase. I used that for many years. I even recorded directly into that. But I would say, uh, make sure that you have good audio that you can record at your computer and have a good pair of microphones that you can use when you're out in the field. So I'm using a Rode Wireless Go at the moment. And that's great because I can do vlogs, I can do courses. And... Um, yeah, it's worked out really great. I'm going to see if I can just put on the uh, some of my other video over here. I'd say the drawbacks of it is that it's not great for and fast. just want to make sure the audio is still coming from here. Just do a quick test. It's just so you can see some of the video. Just give me one sec. All right, actually, we'll, we'll play that after. Okay, so let's let's go down the list here. So I got this microphone. I got a 12 terabyte USB hard drive. Because I'm stuck here right now, I need, I need more space for all this content. All this video that's coming from the camera, from live streaming, I try to capture as much of it as I can. You never know when you might need to go into your library and repurpose something to look at that raw footage. In the past, I would actually get rid of the raw footage from my stock footage shoots in different countries because it took up too much space. But I believe that it's a great idea to hang on to the raw footage. Some clients that are interested in your footage maybe interested in licensing that so uh, i've also had a shift in strategy i'm not a hundred percent focused on stock footage it's more about youtube online courses so i'm keeping the raw footage so 12 terabyte hard drive uh, it's usb3 and i can use it for windows or mac the other purchase i made was a ssd hard drive this is a a uh, toshiba t7 Sorry, Samsung T7. And um, 
this is 500 gigabytes this was a hard drive that i purchased for my mac mini m mini m1 mac mini to give it more space because apple charges you an arm and a leg to get a larger hard drive so i got a 500 500 gigabyte hard drive and because i've been stuck indoors for so long i ended up getting a 4k tv so the entire gear list is going to be listed on my um, YouTube channel. I'll put a link below to my gear kit, so don't worry about that. I just wanted to give some updates for 2021. Some other upgrades I got was getting some gaming controllers. I've got a Logitech gaming controller. It connects to USB and allows me to play gaming. Um, I've been doing a lot of cloud gaming with Google Stadia and I've also got two different controllers. I have a PlayStation 4 wireless controller and um, so I can play on Xbox or Google Stadia and believe it or not, I can create content for, for gaming. I'm experimenting with that on platforms like Twitch as well as YouTube and having those controllers are essential to be able to play those games. It's just no fun playing with a keyboard. So um, yeah, so that was a, a pivot for me to get into gaming and a webcam. This camera right here that I'm covering right now is a Logitech C920 webcam. I was actually using my smartphone as a webcam and you can get an app for that. But it's just a lot of hassle, you know, to do the syncing and all, all that stuff. The less friction that you can create, I believe the more that you are going to create. So having this webcam, it's just so useful for doing Zoom calls, for doing live streams, and it's an easy way to make content. Okay, so I'm going to talk about software because for all these hardware purchases that I made, I've also made a lot of software purchases that have really helped me to create. So Adobe Creative Cloud, they actually had a sale during Black Friday last year. And I just signed up for the entire package. I thought it was a great idea for access to courses to software like Adobe After Effects, Photoshop 2021. You're getting the latest version when you subscribe and I've got access to Adobe Spark. That's allowed me to really level up my game for social media graphics. I might even be able to show you Adobe Spark. In fact, uh, let's go there. I think, I think that the Adobe Spark and getting the Creative Cloud has probably been uh, a game changer for me for getting you know the latest software, access to the latest software, I pay a monthly price and um, I, my timing has been good. I've been getting access to Photoshop 2021. I got access to uh, uh, Adobe After Effects, uh, Adobe Spark, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, let's just switch the screen. Make sure we still got our audio. So we're looking at Adobe Spark right now. So this is Adobe Spark. I use it to create my thumbnails, my Instagram posts. And this is included with the Adobe Creative Cloud. I pay something like 39 bucks a month. In fact, uh, let's pull up to the Adobe Creative Cloud right here. I wanna show you what the cloud looks like. So all these programs here, Adobe Illustrator, Premiere Rush, which you can use for video editing for social media. We've got Dreamweaver. Yeah, I didn't even use most of these. The main programs that I'm using is Photoshop. I use Lightroom. You can also use that on your phone. Premiere Pro, After Effects. And Adobe Audition, that's something I want to spend some time on. Uh, well, I'm also using Adobe Spark, which I showed you. 
and um, Adobe Rush. So Adobe Rush is another program that you can use to video edit. But I, I like this Adobe Spark. You can use all these templates for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And just think about all the time it takes to design these things. But you got a template here. You know, let's just say you want to do Instagram Live. And you can just update this thing with your photos. And um, you're off to the races. So yeah, that's, that's been a great purchase, Adobe Creative Cloud. I've got a separate video reviewing the Adobe Creative Cloud, but that probably has been one of the best purchases that I've made. The other major purchase I made was this program called vMix. So I'm going to put it on screen now. So this software, a little bit crazy right now, I know, because it's uh, we're looking within a window within a window. Uh, this has allowed me to live stream and screen record, and I was doing it on my Windows laptop. This allows me to multi-stream, so you may be watching this on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch even. I'm multi-streaming right now, plus I'm making a recording of this that I can edit and republish. So having vMix was, was, uh, was great. And now that I've got a recent Mac, now I want to look at software that I can use to live stream on a Mac, perhaps. Okay, so yeah, uh, software has been really important to my strategy. I've been video editing a lot more, so having that access to Final Cut Pro on an M1 has really sped up my workflow. I can also use Adobe Premiere on Windows and Mac, so I'm using both ecosystems. And um, yeah, basically I can video edit and you know, my strategy in 21 is to focus on growing my YouTube channel, growing my course selection, and by having a live stream setup, having the microphone, having access to powerful Windows and Mac machines. I can video edit. I got the webcam. Uh, I got a softbox light, you know, a cheap one from Amazon. And lighting is so important, especially if you are recording at nighttime. And Vancouver's weather is not that great. In fact, it's dark and raining right now. But I can turn on the softbox light. I can actually just show you. Boom, there we go. And now we're in studio mode. I'm the brightest light on my block. And people are probably looking through the, the condo window thinking, what the heck is this guy doing? But this is the new normal. Uh, I think it's important to adapt to a reduction in travel. So I've accumulated a lot more gear than I ever have in the past four or five years. Yes, I still have my core video gear, like the drone, my Panasonic GH5, uh, my audio recorder. But yeah, I would say I've invested more in software. I am using a lot of cloud software like Google Docs, the same email marketing software, ConvertKit. I'm using uh, programs like Thrive on my WordPress website to soup it up. I'm using Gumroad to sell my digital products. And um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of gaming and those programs are all based on the cloud. So it really, in some cases, it doesn't matter whether you're using a Windows or Mac. So yeah, um, let's cut over to the video to cover some of the core gear. And uh, this one is from 2020. But yeah, this, this uh, video is gonna be very relevant if you're interested in the details about my travel friendly gear kit in 2021 it's not as travel friendly because we are on lockdown 
but that doesn't mean that I can't create. We don't need to travel to create. Uh, I'm lucky, I'm fortunate that I did shoot a ton of footage over the past three to four years, and I'm still catching up to that backlog. But like I said, everyone has a different situation. Maybe you're just starting out and uh, you've just got a microphone and a webcam. That's great to start so you can build from there. And um, if you do want the PDF gear kit, I've got my previous gear kits that I'm still using. You can download that. Uh, I will we'll put a link to that. So let's play the travel friendly video gear guide and um, enjoy. Have a good weekend. What's up everyone and thanks for visiting my travel video gear page for 2020. In 2020, there haven't been actually a lot of purchases, but uh, I will cover some of the new purchases. We've got some new backpacks. We've got the new earphones that I'm wearing right now. And uh, yeah, we've got more things like storage and batteries. So uh, if you haven't checked out the previous travel gear videos, there's three parts. We cover a lot of different gear from laptops to cameras, lenses, and I'm filming this with the Sigma 30mm f1.4. So my gear is geared towards producing maximum production quality, but also we want mobility so that it's fairly travel friendly. Of course, there's always a fine balance between being travel friendly and not having enough gear to produce that production value. So uh, let's get started. So the first uh, piece of gear I'm going to cover is the Benro tripod. So Benro tripod is my travel friendly tripod that I can fit on my backpack and it's strong enough to sit my camera, my GH5 with my 24-105 Canon lens. And I would say the drawbacks of it is that it's not great for fast action panning and tilting, but just for setting a camera on the tripod like it is right now. And that doesn't, um, that isn't too heavy and that's a good cost. The Benro is really good. It's got the fold up legs. So it's got three different uh, notches that you can use to extend the legs. You can even extend the neck a little bit further. And uh, yeah, it's just something that you need in your gear kit sometimes. You just need a tripod to free up your hands if you're doing videos like this or you're doing interviews. Even though for stock footage, I don't use tripods that much these days. I prefer to use the Ronin or just handheld shoot. Gone are the days of setting everything up on a tripod. It's just too slow, but tripods still have a place in your gear kit. We're going to talk about why do you need a gimbal for filmmaking. Most of all, it's for new filming techniques and for super smooth video. The trend these days is towards stabilization from uh, in your camera body, in your lens, uh, but there's nothing that could beat the stabilization that you get from a gimbal. Companies like GoPro are building stabilization into the cameras. Even DJI has an action camera with stabilization. But the smoothest by far is gonna be from a gimbal on a drone, if you've ever seen those videos. And just think about how fast those aircrafts are flying. So what this allows you to do is things like property tours, you can show off real estate, you can show off a building, or you can even just walk down the street. You can film from a moving vehicle, you can film events, uh, I've seen some music videos where they're using a gimbal to keep the action continuous but not uh, very boring by just leaving it on a tripod and then just moving it around. Uh, so a lot of different applications that you can use this gimbal for. Uh, one that I think would be a perfect fit is for moving action, things like concerts or weddings or uh, network events where uh, you want to keep the camera going and um, but showing around the room or the events. So I hope that helps you think about the different types of shots you can get. I do want to add that 
because it is on basically uh, a motorized or robotic arm that you can pre-program the movement of the gimbal and that allows you to do things like get uh, motion time lapses where you pre-program the path you can also do things like hyperlapses you can do basically a moving time lapse which looks pretty cool so all these shots are not available to people without gimbals so it's almost like you need a gimbal to uh, keep up with uh, video making in 2019 and beyond um, just as drones was a big revolution in filmmaking I believe gimbals are definitely a step forward because we're in Chiang Mai we've got a special Chiang Mai edition and actually if you're spending time in Asia or any city I recommend having a 3M95 mask in your kit so this mask has been approved for screening out those particles I think it's 2.5 microns those types of particles that are harmful to humans whereas if you just get the mask that go over your mouth that you see a lot of the women in Taiwan or Japan or South Korea wearing those are more for either style or covering their face because they don't want too much sun or maybe they got a cold but this one will actually filter out the bad air A little bit hard to put on if you're wearing the headphones. I'll just take them off so you can see. This mask here goes for about 45 baht or you can get a pack of three for 165 baht in Thailand. Just good to keep in your suitcase or your bag because the hazy season or the burning season is not limited to just Chiang Mai. I mean, Kuala Lumpur, as I experienced in 2019, has a hazy season around September. It's not every year, but even countries like Singapore and Vietnam have that. So if you're spending time in Asia or any city, you can monitor the air quality on the Air Visual app. You got to have one of these in your bag. All right. Let's talk about my Sennheiser headphones. I got a separate review on this, but uh, I'll just add a few points here. I'm using the cable right now, but for video editing, it's just great because of the wireless option. I can listen to myself talk when I'm editing talking videos. I don't need to sit in front of the laptop and video edit. Sometimes you just need to play back that video just to see if there, there were any errors in my speech so I can walk around I can listen to it and uh, just frees me up the range of this headphone is actually pretty good I'm working at the summit co-work space in Chiang Mai Thailand definitely check them out they're a very big spacious co-work space so I can actually go to the other room which is maybe 50 meters away and I'm still getting a, a Bluetooth signal so really amazing and for situations where I need to monitor the audio, I can plug in the cable and it's plugged into the, the uh, road right now, which is my new two-person interview kit, which I will cover next. So I didn't know these headphones would be as useful as they are, but the noise cancellation feature is also nice if you're in a cafe or airplane or loud airport where you can get just loud people or noise pollution these headphones are a must especially with the new noise cancellation technology and being able to fold these up check out my detailed review on the the Sennheiser wireless headphones if you're interested in a pair of noise cancelling headphones that don't cost more than 130 bucks all right we're gonna talk about the air purifier. This is a product made by Xiaomi. And I've been a fan of Xiaomi products since I tried out their power bank. And eventually I ended up getting the smartphone, the Xiaomi Redmi 5, which is two years old. And this phone has stood up to the demands of 2020. Just things like taking lots of photos and having great storage and and RAM, the memory to run a lot of apps concurrently, run apps like DJI for my drone, run apps like Ronin for my 
Ronin and being able to run all the other stuff like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I even got a course on video editing for your app and this phone has stood up to the current day demands and this is two years old. And unfortunately you can't get these in Canada but uh, if you just Google Xiaomi stores, they, they have them worldwide. And if you're lucky to get a hold of one, they offer great value products at really amazing value. So they have an air purifier now, which is actually running in this co work space. And I'll give you a point of reference the air in this co work space, because of this purifier, is giving us a reading of 12. I believe 12 to 18, but outside it's about 160 air quality index, which is pretty bad. So that's how uh, essential having one of these purifiers is if you're going to be living in a place like Chiang Mai, Thailand for long term. A lot of my friends that live here have these purifiers. So Xiaomi purifier, uh, I'm going to show you it. It's not here right now because it's plugged in over there. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next product. The next product is this Rode SC6L mobile interview kit. I think I've done like three product interviews on this. I'm recording into this right now. I'm recording into the Rode as well as my Boya mic right into my camera, just, as, uh, just so I have two audio sources. The advantage that this Rode mobile interview kit has is you can record a two-person interview because it has two lav mics and I can monitor the sound and there's some good options to configure the type of audio quality and compression that you have. The one thing that bugs me is it records directly to my iPad mini and then I have to find a way to get it onto my laptop so I can edit that audio so it's a little bit cumbersome that way but um, what I do is I just put everything on Wi-Fi and transfer the audio through my cloud drives so a little bit of inconvenience but it is convenient because I don't need my audio recorder and I can record broadcast quality two-person interviews so that's a new addition to my audio kit for 2020 uh, next we've got these external drive hard cases so this one is made by Orico and um, this might be a Thai company not exactly sure but I started collecting these because I started collecting external hard drives because I generate so much video content and it does a great job of protecting my external hard drives, my four terabyte drives. It's got room for a cable and maybe even your SD cards. So this is the smaller version and I'll put links to these below. And I've also got the, the larger version. This one can fit your external hard drive plus then some. It's got enough room for probably like a couple USB drives, some SD cards as well as a cable and so essential to protect your data if you're going to be spending hundreds of bucks on a four terabyte hard drive, a five terabyte hard drive, which leads me to my next product, which is a five terabyte external Seagate hard drive that I got in Canada. For some reason, external hard drive space is more expensive in Thailand than Canada, even though these are manufactured in Thailand. But these are essential for just storing the 4K footage because if you're like me, you've probably got a laptop or a computer with maybe a, at most a one terabyte hard drive SSD or 500 gigabyte or 256 if you know if you're an unfortunate Mac owner and uh, you'll fill that internal hard drive storage up fast. So you need these guys for mobile storage. And um, I also, in each home base city, I have a larger version. I, I carry a, um, a six or, yeah, six terabyte hard drive, which is a bit bulkier and it's got some extra ports so you can use it as a hub to connect all these smaller hard drives in uh, just for having, you know, one physical larger storage to store a lot of the storage from these smaller hard drives. Uh, the next purchase related to storage that I want to cover that I haven't got yet but may get this year or soon is in a, an external USB-C uh, SSD drive. Now these are high performance drives. You can 
you can get them quite uh, quite available in Canada as well as in Thailand and uh, I plan to get at least a 500 gigabyte SSD drive these drives are high performance they don't have the moving parts so that if you need to video edit and you need maximum performance if you're doing things like editing 4k footage these drives are going to be essential to have in your kit all right I've got a couple of backpacks I want to talk about. So I've spoken about this Manfrotto backpack before, but I want to talk about this in a bit more detail. Uh, I've had this for, this is my second year, second season with this backpack. And I love it because it's so light, it's so functional, and it's so discreet. It fits my, uh, my Huawei laptop, or I can put my 15 inch MacBook Pro it's got some padding on the back, so it protects the laptop. It's also got padding underneath. It is rainproof, which is rare to find in a backpack, so you don't need to put those annoying backpack covers on. And uh, it's got storage for a couple of lenses if you open up the bottom compartment. And it's got a nice camo design, and you re can reconfigure the storage here. Got some nice zipper compartments, you know, for things like coins or maybe you want to put your wallet. And inside it's it's got a nice compartment you can store your camera. I put my GH5 with uh, the 24-105 lens and then I'll pack my Sigma 30mm inside the bottom compartment. And uh, yeah, it's got room for some cables. And I can even fix my tripod to the side and put my water bottle on the side. And um, yeah, you can tighten up the straps. And it doesn't look very fancy, but it's just functional. It's made by Manfrotto, very trusted Italian brand name for tripods and as well as backpacks. Okay, so I can fit, you know, this is a good day pack, but I've actually started travel with this internationally because I keep my international Saroy backpack. I keep that in Malaysia because I actually don't enjoy traveling with it because of the weight. Uh, in the future, I'd like to get maybe a rolling case with some wheels, but a lot of the low cost flight airlines within Asia, they have a seven kilogram limit for carry-ons. So yeah, just the, the weight of the carry-on suitcase is gonna put you over the limit. So this Manfrotto is very practical for travel within Asia. The second backpack I'm going to talk about for 2020 is the, the North Face backpack here. This is a camo design, so, you know, for those of you people who like camo, you'll like this design. It matches my H&M camo puffy jacket. And uh, what can I say about this? It's got nice deep pockets on the sides for putting your drinks. In fact, I'm just gonna get my drink here so you can see how it fits. So this container fits on the side here. And I travel with two of these. I'm gonna talk about these in a second. But I, I like the handle on this North Face. It's got a nice, rugged, easy to grip handle so I can put the Manfrotto on my back and I can just hand carry this one. It's got very deep spacious compartments. It was actually meant to carry the Xbox One, which I didn't end up bringing over. Um, but you can actually fit a 15 inch lap laptop here. It's got very good padding on the back and two deep compartments that you can just put a ton of cables, a laptop, like anything that doesn't fit in the main backpack. I also like the front pocket, great for keeping coins, wallet, passports, and miscellaneous wires. And you've got this drawstring area here, which you can put miscellaneous stuff like a towel, and uh, you can tighten this up. And uh, yeah, it's got the um, kind of a waist, waist strap, which you can put around your waist. You can adjust the arms. It's got what they call flex, flex vent technology, so you don't uh, get too sweaty against your back if you're carrying this for a long, long hike or a long walk through the airport. And lots of plenty of pockets inside to keep coins and stuff like that. So this is a very nice second backpack. And 
We will now talk about my double steel wall canteen container. A lot of people in Asia give me weird stares when they see this because they think I'm, ca I'm carrying some mysterious drink. Most of the time there's water in here. This keeps cold drinks cool, hot drinks hot, and useful for carrying anything from wine to whiskey uh, in your suitcase without worrying about it breaking. Um, this is also very sustainable friendly. If you don't want to use a lot of plastic bottles, you can just refill these things, fill it up in the airport. If you're living in Vancouver, there's lots of areas to fill these things up. And um, yeah, if you're going to a restaurant and you just want to make sure you got your water, these are more discreet than carrying a water bottle. All right. And uh, one more thing I will talk about is a Mavic Air battery. I mean, not very exciting, but uh, I've actually had a Mavic Air battery that died when my Mavic Air crashed and I actually had a Mavic Air battery die while I was in mid-flight and um, so having a spare battery is essential for using your drone. Without the battery you can't use it, right? So um, I recommend getting these like during Christmas holiday sales for a hundred bucks. Just essential to stock up on these as um, because they do wear out over time and uh, yeah so that's most of the new gear for 2019. One more thing I will talk about which is essential to have in your kit is an HDMI cable. So this HDMI cable came with the HP monitor that I got from Costco and this is for fast high-speed transfers. HDMI high speed, just so essential for connecting your laptop to monitors, your laptop to TVs, your camera even has, the GH5 has the HDMI and you can connect that to the monitor just to quickly preview, you know, your footage in the camera or watch movies. Even the super mini Super Nintendo, which I played with my friend, has HDMI cable. You need this cable to connect to a larger screen to double, triple your fun. And uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this coverage of the 2020 gear. Now, if you want more coverage on my other stuff, like my Huawei laptop, my Panasonic GH5 camera, my Sigma 30mm lens, and all of my gear, my Mavic Air drone, stuff like that, please watch the other videos to get more. And I've also got a PDF that talks about this more if you're more uh, of someone who prefers to read text in a PDF format. So uh, thanks for watching and um, I do, do want to point out that if you do decide to click any of the links and make a purchase it does help me out a little bit through my Amazon affiliate link but it's no extra cost to you so just want to uh, get that out, be transparent. So thanks and hope you gear up and uh, create lots of amazing content in 2020.